Hi. Uh, hey, uh, so, you know, when you give a talk, they're always like a couple of months in advance, like, what's your title? Give me an abstract. And it's like, I really just write my talks like the night before. So uh, anyway, uh, I, I want to talk about my dream stack, uh, which, you know, this is a remix conference. Uh, this is a web framework. Um, I work at on the lower level stuff, the runtime layer stuff. And uh, so, you know, I, wa I want to talk about how some predictions for the future uh, and kind of, yeah, what, how, how I wish all of this stuff would, would kind of pan out. Um, <clears throat> the web is super important. Uh, it's, it's become the medium of human information at this point. Uh, and because of that, you know, we, we can basically assume that the web is still going to be here, say, five years from now, 10 years from now, maybe 20 years from now. It's very important, right? You, interact both with, uh, I don't know, McDonald's uh, and also your bank through the web. Um, uh, so because of that, you know, we're, I'm, I'm pretty confident that uh, HTML will still be here in five years, CSS, uh, HTTP, and of course, JavaScript. Uh, and uh, because of that, you know, JavaScript has kind of this important place in society. It is kind of the default programming language. Uh, and that's why I, I work on this <laughs> after all these years still, uh, because uh, I, I, I think this is, this is kind of the way that we will be expressing a lot of logic uh, going forward. Uh, so web frameworks uh, like Remix are constantly improving. It's, it's kind of insane to see the breakneck speed of, of this stuff. React, uh, path-based routing, layout routes, these are all really important innovations that, is, that are pushing how we organize websites uh, forward. And I mean, the web being tied to like all of these human institutions is providing all of this economic energy to, to kind of uh, simplify how we create websites. Uh, all of you here presumably have jobs and, and kind of get paid to, to think and, and improve this stuff. Um, yet, relatively little has changed in the JavaScript runtime space. Uh, it's all my software still, still, still no JS. Um, uh, but I think this is going to change here in the next couple of years. It's already changing. It hasn't really panned out completely, but uh, uh, the evidence is, is, is quite apparent. Um, so yeah, let me just talk in the abstract about my dream stack. This isn't a specific piece of software necessarily. This is just kind of attributes that I wish uh, a it, when I'm building a website, I wish they it had. <clears throat> so first of all, you know we're programming in in kind of scripting languages, and the great thing about scripting languages is that they uh, are scriptable. They uh, it, they reduce boilerplate. You can you can really create really small, simple APIs, abstractions, uh, and so you know I think it's important that that it scales down as small as possible. That is, if you have a really small, simple program, that it is uh, expressible in a single file. Um, it uses JavaScript, obviously. Uh, it's the universal scripting language. Uh, I think in the limit, JavaScript will be the only scripting language. Uh, it should use async I.O., uh, uh, obviously. I think this is basically table stakes right now, but uh, optimal HTTP server performance is important. Um, and it should have a built-in uniform set of dev tools that you don't need to think about. Code formatting, linting, document generation, uh, LSP, editor integration, et cetera. All of that stuff should come out of the box. Um, Furthermore, you know, cloud infrastructure these days is not simple. It is, it is, it is a complex thing. And so, you know, we kind of need to think, think about how this, this dream stack extends into the cloud. Um, you know, if I'm putting up a website, I basically want to pay as little as possible, obviously. Uh, I want to manage it as little as possible. Like cloud infrastructure is heavily managed. Uh, it should basically be managed all the way up into my code. Only, only kind of the JavaScript that I write should, should be configurable. Everything else should, should be taken care of, of the, the provider. 
Uh, so, you know, I want it to be serverless. I want it to be pay per request. I want it to be free for uh, low traffic demo apps. Uh, it should run at the edge, which means that if a user, say, in Tokyo is requesting my website, that there should be a, it, I should be able to respond to that user in Tokyo in, in a very close data center so that we don't incur these round the world uh, uh, speed of light kind of uh, bounding problems. Uh, you, you do not want to respond to all requests from uh, US East, right? Uh, uh, <clears throat> Cold starts need to be fast. Uh, there's a lot of serverless systems that have uh, relatively slow cold starts. I, I think less than 500 milliseconds, including network latency, is, is, uh, is absolutely necessary. Um, and it should have no or minimal config. There's too many config files. Everybody introduces a new config file for every piece of software. We just want to reduce boilerplate. Like we want to express, deal with the problem at hand, not not kind of YAML files and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to attempt to do a demo here. Uh, let's see. So anyway, I want to start with a little uh, HEP server example, uh, and I'm going to do this uh, on Dino Deploy. Uh, and let me just see here if I'm going to mess this up entirely. Okay, so. Um, so right, I'm Dino deploy, whatever, it's, 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 it's my server side uh, infrastructure that, that I'm working on. We have a little playground thing here that, that kind of lets you create uh, one-off uh, uh, little scripts here. And it comes with some, some uh, default text, which I'm going to immediately delete. So um, first of all, so let me just kind of from memory, we're going to import serve from HTTPS dino.land std hgp server.ts. Uh, we can import TypeScript in Dino. Uh, and this thing, uh, this, this is a little function that takes a, takes a callback. Uh, you take a request, return a response. So it takes a request, and we return a response. And let's say, hello, remix. Um, and let's save and deploy here. On, on the right-hand side, you have uh, uh, a little fake web browser uh, where it's making a request to uh, salty ant 12 dino dev. Let's change that name here to remix if that's available. Uh, oh, yeah. Of course. Um, sorry, I think remix.dino.dev is taken. Remix conf. No. These are all my names that I was trying out before this presentation. Remix 2. OK, there we go. Now we have uh, remix2.dino.dev. So this, is, this thing is deployed worldwide, right? When, when, when I change this and add some exclamation points here and I click Save and Deploy, this is going to Japan. This is going to India. This is going everywhere. So you know, when you hit, hit this server, uh, you, you are, this is essentially an optimal uh, worldwide web server uh, here implemented in JavaScript. Is this big enough? Let's see. So I just want to curl this and examine this a little bit. So, you know, it's HTTP2. Uh, we're here in Salt Lake City, so we're, we're getting responded to by uh, US West 3. It's, it's, uh, it's at the edge, so to speak. Uh, and yeah, this, this is what I mean by it should reduce to the simplest possible thing. If you want to have like a little A-B testing service, why can't it just be four lines of code? Why do I need to ha add a you know, package JSON file and a lock file and a configuration file and deploy it to GitHub? Like some things sh are inherently simple and small. Um, now to find my presentation again, which is weirdly gone. Uh, right, so, so anyway, that, that's a little Hello World server. Let me give you something a little bit more uh, realistic here, which is uh, uh, my personal blog, tinyclouds.org. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't blog much. Like, I just want this thing to be as simple as possible. Like, I want to manage it in Git, of course. Like, I, I'm not going to use some, some web uh, editor thing. Uh, I want it to be managed in Markdown. 
I do a lot of code examples. I want server. I want uh, syntax highlighting. I want that rendered server side, of course. I want everything rendered server side. I want no client side JavaScript at all. Um, I want the source code in, in GitHub. I want the the beautiful Vercel slash Netlify experience of like you know opening a PR and getting a little preview URL. Um, I want it at the edge, uh, and I want deployments to take less than ten seconds. Uh, so. Let me just uh, uh, open this up a little bit here, and I'm using the internet. Good God. Let me try using my phone. There we go. OK. So this, this project I, has essentially one JavaScript file. It has one JSON file, which, which annoys me. It has two random files here that, that Kind of annoy me, and then it has a post directory with with some uh, some markdown in it. Um, let me let me just I'm I'm here in this directory here, so it is fairly minimal. Uh, I, if I if I kind of cat or bat this this uh, main JS file, essentially it's it's pulling in all of the complexity from from this import, just like in the HTTP server example. All the complexity is hid behind the API, and what's left here is just some configuration, right? Configuring my name, configuring the author. You know, I like to have a gray background. Um, uh, you know, I, I have some Google Analytics stuff in here. By the way, using Google Analytics server side, awesome. Uh, not client side. Uh, some some redirects, whatever. So, some middleware. This is tw 25 lines of configuration, but I would argue this is fairly necessary configuration. This is the only code in the in the entire project. Uh, so if I run Dino task dev, this starts up a little local version of this, and I can view it here. Um, and what I want to do is, is just make a little change here and, and kind of demo uh, what, what, this, what the kind of workflow would look like. So I'm going to change my, my uh, blog post here, JavaScript containers, and insert some JavaScript code. Uh, and save that, and then come back here. Okay, of course it's it's updated, auto reloaded, lovely. Uh, this is, as I said, you know, whatever. I can open up Dev Tools and show you that this is that this is uh, uh, server rendered. There's there's no JavaScript on this page, so so all the syntax highlighting kind of comes comes for free. By the way, remember the only code in this thing is is the 25 line configuration file. But now let's you know this is localhost. This is this is. Uh, 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 not deployed globally. Let's let's now now kind of see how fast it takes to reflect this uh, worldwide, right? So so my tinyclouds.org JavaScript containers is it, it does not have the weird uh, uh, code snippet in there. So I'm just going to comment something, remix demo, and I'm going to push directly to main because like who cares? This is just my website. Um, uh, and what I'm going to do is, is just let's see how long this takes here. Okay, so, so let's see, push, and it's pushed, so I'll just reload one, two, three, four, come on, five, six, seven, okay, all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I don't know. You guys are web developers. I'm sure you guys push code to production. What I'm arguing here is that this is a 10-second deployment worldwide, and that this is optimal. This is very optimal. Uh, and we have some trickery to do this. Uh, uh, and what I want to do is, is uh, you know, with, with uh, the rest of my Whatever you can, you can also look at this in, in Dev Tools and, and see that it has a 100 uh, performance score, et cetera. Uh, it, again, my, my, my little blog post, my, my little blog site is, is not a real world app, but, but I, I do think that it demonstrates kind of the, the, the dream stack, so to speak. Um, so I think we're facing a post Unix future, uh, actually. So serverless edge runtimes like Cloudflare workers and Dino deploy are very cheap and very fast. And this performance and simplicity is achieved by using VA isolates for multi-tenancy rather than Linux VMs. Uh, and so 
my prediction is that to, to, for us to maximize the utility of these serverless web of, of these serverless systems, uh, that web frameworks are soon going to be built on top of the primitives that those server-side runtimes expose rather than node primitives. Cloudflare workers is not Node.js. Dino deploy is not Node.js. Um, we, we're not quite there yet, right? Uh, uh, you know, re Remix can compile to these, these platforms, but it's not built from the ground up for these platforms. It does not run, you know, when you do Remix build, if I remember correctly, <laughs> you, you, uh, 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 that runs locally in a Unix environment, right? Uh, uh, you know, it probably spawns subprocesses. There are no subprocesses in Cloudflare workers, right? There, there, there's a, it's a simpler abstraction. Um, so, you know, as if we, we have this, this little project at, at Dino, uh, uh, Luca, Luca built this uh, uh, fresh, which is not, is not, not a web framework that, that, uh, uh, we're really promoting or, or you know, intending to to uh, to utilize long term, but more more of of kind of a demo of what kind of this post Unix uh, web frameworks might look like, uh, and how you can achieve 10 second deployments and how you can achieve uh, very cheap, very fast websites. Um, and so, you know, I, I have a, a bit of a call to action for you all is to demonstrate uh, that, that Remix can, can be deployed uh, like this in, in 10 seconds. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a hint that the build step needs to be just in time instead of ahead of time, right? When you git push some code and you, and you have GitHub actions, say provision a VM and then run npm install or Remix build, that's going to kill you. you will, that will not happen in 10 seconds. So to, to really achieve this, this super fast deployment, we're, we're going to need to move the build step from ahead of time, that is at, de, at, at when, you, when you commit the code, to just in time, on first request. That's what's happening in this blog. That's what's happening in, in Fresh. Um, I'll, just just a word about Dino deploy. You know, I've I've built three JavaScript runtimes in my life. The first was Node. The second was Dino. And the third is Dino deploy. This is this is a a completely new uh, uh, JavaScript uh, infrastructure, right? It's it's really built for serverless at the edge. Uh, it's running in 32 regions worldwide. It powers things like Netlify edge functions and and Supabase edge functions. So it's it's kind of behind the scenes uh, operating in in these places. Um, I would say, you know, Re Remix has uh, Dino deploy support now, so you can, you can run this uh, create Remix command with the Dino template and it works. But this compiles to Dino. Uh, it's not Dino first. And so, you know, I, 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 I think there's, there's still some work to do here to, to really achieve that, that uh, these 10 second deployment times um, and, and kind of uh, see the, the, the post Unix uh, uh, world that I think is going to quickly approach us here in the next couple of years. Um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, and you feel free to come up to me or <laughs> you know, send me an email. Uh, uh, thanks. <laughs>